Welcome back. This is part two of 4.3 soils. We're essentially just going to consider this science understanding. Excess nitrogen and phosphorus can be leached from soils and can cause eutrophication in water bodies. What you'll need to be able to do is explain the process and consequences of eutrophication. Eutrophication is the enrichment of nutrients in a body of water. The issue with this is that it can lead to excessive plant as well as algal growth. And what this can do is lead to the eventual death of an aquatic ecosystem. From this diagram, the important thing to note is that processes like leaching as well as runoff that can occur near bodies of water can contribute to this process of eutrophication. We usually associate eutrophication as uh, an excessive growth of algae and so we see these algal blooms that typically turn the water uh, a bright green colour due to the presence of this algae. Now how does this actually occur? So this diagram we're just going to run through it and it's going to explain how this leaching and this runoff is going to contribute to eutrophication. So to start off at number one we can see that there's going to be a load up of nutrients. We get excessive nutrients which are from fertilizers being flushed from the land into rivers or lakes by rainwater. So this is going to provide a large amount of nitrogen and phosphorus and other important nutrients which is necessary for plant and algal growth. So the second step, plants end up flourishing, which may seem initially quite good. However, this provides the right environment for algae to flourish and to grow. And algae, we know, typically forms a layer on top of bodies of water, um, resulting in these so-called algal blooms. The issue with this is that plants which are in the water would require sunlight. However, this layer of algae will block sunlight which then prevents those plants from photosynthesizing. What this means is that the plants will eventually die and this is going to reduce the production of oxygen by these plants within the water itself. Another thing that's going to reduce the oxygen in this is these decomposition processes. So as the plants die, we know that bacteria will carry out a form of decomposition and this can end up using even more oxygen in the water. So what that would then mean is that other organisms which may depend on the plants or depend on organisms which depend on those plants, they will eventually run out of food and they will die off. And so this is going to continue to affect those other organisms within the food chains and it's going to result in a potential death of the entire ecosystem. Now, if all of the oxygen is actually used up, then typically bacteria will carry out another form of decomposition called anaerobic decomposition, so that's without the presence of oxygen. And this would typically produce compounds such as ammonia uh, or methane or hydrogen sulfide. And a buildup of these types of compounds can be quite toxic to aquatic ecosystems, and so that can actually um, prevent these ecosystems from recovering. So that concludes part two of subtopic 4.3 on eutrophication. I'll see you guys in the next video.